Hello out there. We're on the air. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to all my friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Daily Bitcoin Journey. Actionable and logical discussion for Bitcoiners and for future Bitcoiners. It's nice to see everybody in the chat this morning. I apologize very much for being late. 20 minutes late today. But I'm sure once uh, you hear what happened, you'll understand a little bit. We had an accident. We had a bit of an accident. And uh, when I say we, I mean Arnie. <clears throat> he took a crap where he's not supposed to be crapping in the house. And so we had a bit of uh, damage control this morning. But that's life. That's life with a new puppy. And uh, that's the way she goes. As Ricky says, as Ricky from the Trailer Park Boys would say, it's the way she goes. So he's on the loose. I didn't want to put him back in his crate because it, we we kind of figured out that we don't want to put him in there to punish him because we have to get him to like his crate. So he's roaming around this morning. But anyways, I'm not sure. I'm not an expert on puppy training yet. It's my first dog I ever had, believe it or not. 35 years later, I always wanted one, but uh, he's been pretty good. Just a couple. We've had him for just over three weeks now, I think, and. Outside of a couple incidents, he's been pretty good. So we'll let him off the hook. But that's why the show is late today. Good morning, Johnny. Oh yeah, I need to I need to calm down here a little bit. Good morning, Johnny. Good morning, Crypto Heathen. Jason's in the house. Good morning, Philip. My guy from Nostra this morning. We were talking coffee on there. Good to see you, my friend, Jose. Ballsy Golf, great name. He says, good morning, Bitcoin. It's still dark in my neighborhood in BC, but the coffee is on. Yeah, I guess BC time would be what? 622 right now? Seven, I think 622. Good morning, MC, MC Hammer. Another new face in the chat. I should remind you that even though we are live on the YouTube, we like YouTube, we're also on zap.stream and that has been uh something i've been trying to pay a lot closer attention to reef is over there very live stream chat it's kind of like the the chat for leaf is over there you can find that stream by going to bitcoinjourney.ca slash stream made it pretty easy for you to find and so it's been good. It's been growing over there. Yesterday, like I said, it was buzzing. So we'll see what happens this morning. And I'll be checking on the live stream quite often. So if you got something to say, we're gonna we're gonna put our priority today on zap.stream. I'll say that. And it is it is the bit uh Bitcoin. You good? It is Bitcoin QA day today everybody's favorite day including mine and so what we're going to do there is i have a couple questions a couple topics to talk through questions live chat so if you're bitcoin or otherwise throw it in the chat and we'll uh we'll check it out johnny says that's why god made puppies so cute so you don't kill them yeah that is very true. That is very accurate statement from Jolly. Good morning, Brennan. Coffee's almost gone. I'm through one coffee already. I'm on to number two. And it is hot because it is cold here in the prairies this morning. Minus, minus 26, I think it was, with the wind chill. So, sounds like I'm getting himself to his crate. <laughs> yeah, he just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. Oh, what a guy he is. Okay. Rick is in the house. Good morning. Smash the like. It is free. Big shout out to everybody who has been tuning in every morning. The subscribers of the show. Everybody who's been liking the show and commenting as well. It really goes a long way and I very much appreciate it. So I'm not going to ask you to do it, but if you feel like doing it, get, get yourself some good karma and start your day right. Unlike me. It's been a shitty start to the day, no doubt about that. But still early, eight in the morning. We got tons of time.
to turn things around. Litecoin, Bitcoin only. Good morning, my friend. Good to see everybody in the chat today. So I'll get through some news, some housekeeping stuff. In the meantime, if you do have any questions, any things you want to talk about, throw it in the live chat and we'll kind of go. Thursdays are usually a little bit scrambly on the show, off the show this morning as well, but on the show. So if you have anything you want to talk about, we kind of just do it as they come into the chat. So that's what we're going to go with today. Let's, uh, so Letha is in the chat. Noah is in the chat and Rick Costa is over on Zap.stream. It seems like we're getting some more traffic over there, which is good. I love that. Uh, I love Zap.stream. Maybe we'll have Kieran in the chat again today. Who knows? Let's get to let's get to the news. Let's get to the news sponsored by Bitcoin News. Oh, that's not what we want. Let's, uh, let's, I did do the metrics today. I missed it yesterday, but we're uh, we're back. Journey team. Oh, journey team. That's that's a new one. On the air. <laughs> James Bond never fails to get a laugh. <clears throat> so we are currently block height eight three five six five eight. We are less than forty five hundred blocks away from the halving. Crazy. Crazy. We're less than a month away from the having now expected. Let's see where we're at for their estimation. This is timechaincalendar.com. Great resource for Bitcoiners. So we're still estimated for April 20th, 420. What day is that of the week? What day of the week is that? I mean, Saturday. Hmm. Well, That'll be the second edition of the Sat or Day Show 420. I probably won't be dabbing into the 420 though on air at eight in the morning. But who knows? Stranger things have happened in my life. <laughs> if you're transacting on the Bitcoin layer one, you're paying 24 sats average per V byte, which is pretty good, pretty, pretty reasonable. Yesterday was a good day for consolidating sats and Today, I would probably hold off, but that's just me, unless you have to. Yeah, the thing to keep in mind with your transaction fees is really you really have to ask yourself how urgent it is. If you're selling somebody an item or if you're buying an item from somebody, you probably want that transaction to be fairly urgent. If you're just consolidating wallets, you can probably set the fee pretty low. Uh, don't set it too low, though. I have made that mistake a few times. And it will cost you in terms of stress. You can probably recover it, but it is much more stressful. So something to consider there. Pay attention to your urgency of your transaction. And if all possible, use lightning. Because why wouldn't and now is the time to be setting yourself up for high fee environments. Get yourself a Phoenix wallet, fund it, set up a channel, and put like one or two million sats in there and, and just leave it. Leave it for when the price runs up and you want to spend some Bitcoin or you're in a very high fee environment, you need to spend some Bitcoin. You're, you're not going to regret doing that. The price today gone up a little bit. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about, actually, we'll start with that. So the price today is 67044 US dollars. According to Bitcoin news, yesterday, Bitcoin plunged 8% which was the biggest one day drop since the FTX collapse back in 2021. So I didn't even notice that, to be honest, to be honest with you, I did not even notice the price. And there's just so much happening in Bitcoin <clears throat> on this channel, uh, people reaching out to me looking for Bitcoin. There's just so much happening and so many exciting things that I did not even notice that the price dropped that much. And in fact, I was actually pissed yesterday afternoon because I'm waiting for some money to show up so I can buy some Bitcoin. But the price was running up yesterday afternoon after Jay Powell announced that they're keeping your rates the same. So I was pissed that the price was going up because that means I'm going to have to pay more and get less sats for my purchase that's coming up. So shitty day if you're a trader maybe, but good day for um, people who are actively buying. One year ago today, you could have purchased a Bitcoin for thousand bucks four years ago, no six thousand 
US dollars. The Moscow time today, one US dollar will get you 1486 sats. Heck of a deal. Here in Canada today, like I said, it is minus 26. It is cold. And maybe that's why Arnie shit on the floor because he didn't want to go outside in that extreme weather. <laughs> but the price is 90,872 Canadian dollars. The deal of a lifetime. I would say that the Canadian price is a better deal than the US price, just based on everything happening in Canada right now. The Moose Jaw time. One Canadian dollar will get you 1,100 sats on the dot. Pretty damn good. So let's get off of there. Let's get to, let's check on the chat. Let's check to see what's going on. Howard Williams, five over half of a Bitcoin. It's going to be hard to get the other half. Well, it depends what you're doing. You're in, uh, you're in the right show today because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. It's getting to one and how rare that's going to be. So I'm going to put that question on the back burner, Howard, for a couple minutes uh, because it's kind of the, the first question on the docket today. But we got some stuff to get through first. Rock and roll. I'm waiting for this one. Good morning, wonderful Bitcoin. 20 years. Bitcoin is either going to go to zero or going to infinity. And it's not going to zero. Well, James Bond says you have to make a special rule for that event. I agree. If I'm not busy on that Saturday, we'll definitely do a show to celebrate the halving. It'll be pretty exciting, I think. I've never been through a I had Bitcoin last having, but I didn't really know what the having was or the importance of it. So this is kind of my first meaningful having. Simple math, according to rock and roll, which it is. So demand increasing significantly, supply shrinking significantly. And it is math. It's economics. It's the, it's the greatest economic recipe in world history. Brennan says, I think people may be making KYC a bigger deal than it actually is. I have no interest in jail or avoiding taxes. Keys cannot be taken from my hands. Can always move if that much money is at stake. I kind of agree with that. I do think, uh, and one, one thing I will say on that is that within our living in the future membership we got going on, we got a group chat in there. And the people were talking about non-KYC stuff yesterday and, and trying to get rid of their KYC Bitcoin. I'm kind of... A I do have a lot of KYC Bitcoin. I don't have a lot of Bitcoin, period, but the percentage of Bitcoin that I have is a lot of KYC. And so it's not a huge concern for me either, honestly. One thing I will say is that maybe slowly over time, I'll start cashing that out and buying non KYC sats. But I think the most important thing you can focus on going forward is buying non KYC sats. So even if you had, say, $500 worth of non-KYC sats, and that's what you protected, you're still going to have more Bitcoin than 99.5% of the world. So don't get too concerned. Don't panic about your KYC Bitcoin. They're going to come from much, uh, there's going to be a much lower hanging fruit than that. And especially if you use different things like Lightning, like Fetty, eCash, there's ways to kind of wash some of it, but I wouldn't be too concerned about it, honestly. Just just put a priority, uh, put a focus on getting on KYC only in the future. And I'm with you, Brennan. I think that uh, he says the world where KYC Bitcoin matters is not where I think we're headed. I agree with that, honestly. If Bitcoin becomes uh, the standard and it becomes the currency of the world, they're going to have a very, very hard time tracking every time you buy a coffee with Bitcoin and whether or not you pay tax on that, it's a currency. You don't get taxed every time you exchange Canadian to US dollar. So I'm with you there. Jason says anything under 100,000 is a buy. I agree. And I think that anything under 100 million is a buy, honestly. It's, it's honestly insane that they're able to keep the price down right now, but it's just because people don't really understand Bitcoin. So that's what we're doing on this show. That's the goal of this show is to help people understand Bitcoin. So shout out to zap.stream once again. We got St. Philip is in there as well. And Francis. There we go. Love to see that. Zap.stream doing great things. Yesterday we had more viewers in zaps.stream than we had in YouTube. So 
Some Bitcoin news for today. If I can find it, I'm still kind of getting over my accidentally uh, signing out of all my Gmail accounts. I have way too, way too many email addresses. One thing I'm looking forward to in a Bitcoin world and a Nostra world is having one private key for everything. That will be pretty nice. Okay, so before we get to the news, a couple here is with, with Zap.Stream, if you're watching it on your browser, the, the best way to connect your browser to Zap.Stream, you don't have to have a Nostra account to use zap.stream to communicate in there you can just set up a profile but it helps to have a nostra profile but uh, you're looking to connect see if i can put this in the chat if you're looking to connect to lb you do need a referral code this isn't my referral code i don't know where mine is but it doesn't much matter so you can go to there i i guess it showed up in two different things here but you can go to info.getlb.com slash invites. So that's how you can get a code to get an LB account. And that's what you're gonna use for your Lightning Wallet on your desktop browser, which connects to zap.stream. So within there, you can send the show some zats, you can send other Bitcoiners in the chat some Bitcoin, but you have to connect through GetLB or whatever else you use. I use GetLB for the desktop. <clears throat> so I wanted to share that with everybody today because I've had a couple people asking me how to get LB. <laughs> so th there it is right there, info at getlb.com slash in. Uh, what else we got here? Howard says, example, last year I could get a million sats a week. Now it's a month to get a million sats. Yep. And I hate to break it to you, Howard, but it's only going to get harder. So depressing for sure. And that's why I was so pissed yesterday. Because I wasn't getting, I'm getting less sats than I'm used to getting here. <laughs> but uh, anyways, St. Uh, Philip says, did you receive my sats? Does it show? I don't, that's a good question. I can see kind of the, the zaps that have come in, but it doesn't say for who it's from. I can look after the show, but it's not something that I track during the show. So you can keep testing if you want. <laughs> And this is a great point from Crypto Heathen. Don't send your non-KYC sats to your KYC address. Very good point there. Very important. Because if you do that, you're basically KYCing all your non-KYC sats. Not what you want to do. <clears throat> okay. Well, it seems like there's quite a few questions coming in. So maybe we'll skip some of the news today. I had a couple of videos to watch. Maybe I'll save them for tomorrow, though. uh okay so let's let's talk about a couple different things here and then we're going to get to the questions so this uh this segment every day we talk about the bitcoin news it is sponsored by bitcoin news so check out bitcoin news on twitter that's where i get the majority of my news every morning before the show they have every piece of news related to Bitcoin. it's non-biased it's just good information there you can also check out their youtube channel Bitcoin News Com. You can find both links in the description. And they got a lot of cool things there. So I think it's Monday, Wednesday. They got live shows on Twitter. Yesterday's was on eCash, Fediment, and it's pinned on their profile. So if you're looking to learn a little bit more about eCash and Fediment, they did a longer show, a live show on that yesterday on Twitter. So check that one out. It's pinned to their profile. The second one here I wanted to talk about was Vanguard. So Vanguard, uh, somebody d discovered that although Vanguard is not allowing their clients to buy Bitcoin, they own 14% of the micro strategy shares themselves. So they're saying, nope, you can't buy Bitcoin. It's too volatile. We don't want you owning Bitcoin while they own 14 percent of micro strategy shares vanguard and their funds own 14 percent of micro strategy which is the equivalent of approximately thirty-one thousand bitcoin so that's kind of a perfect example of just how insane the old system is how insane the legacy financial system is 
that they can tell people, no, you're not buying Bitcoin, but we're going to buy Bitcoin. So I, I do think that over time, it'll catch up to them. Anybody who's, who fights Bitcoin loses. So Vanguard will be no exception to that. Second one, Bitcoin supply is down 40% right now on exchanges. The lowest it's been for a very long time. And based on the halving coming up in less than a month, that's going to be fewer and fewer Bitcoin on exchanges. So we're going to come to a point here. I talked about $100 million Bitcoin a couple minutes ago. We're going to come to a point where there's no Bitcoin left and there's even more demand than there is today. And that day is not too far away. And when that happens, we're going to see the biggest movement in Bitcoin history. Not a matter of if anymore. It's not a matter of if, but when. And the last thing here I want to just mention, we talked about a little bit already, but Powell announced yesterday that the interest rates are not changing. Which as soon as he announced that, Bitcoin shot up from, I think, 63,000 to 67,000. And the reason why it would shoot up, this is kind of the correlation between interest, ra interest rates and Bitcoin. So if you think about it, it's just kind of like the measure of the economy. So when interest rates are high, that means they're signaling that the economy can handle that. There's enough production within the economy that they wouldn't have any issue raising the rates. On the flip side of that, if they change their mind and pivot and they decide that they're going to drop the rates, that's an indication to the market that things are not good. So that's when everybody flocks into Bitcoin. That's kind of what happened yesterday with the interest rates because they announced that they weren't moving the rates. So that suggests that they can't push them any further up without things happening. And so money flows into Bitcoin. And the other part of that is if you think about it, the people who actually hold money in like a GIC interest rate with their bank, the higher that rate is, the more people are actually going to be using that, right? Because it's pretty much a guarantee for the most part. We've seen a lot of banks go down this last year. But for the most part, that's a good way to get some interest income. And the higher that rate is, the more attractive it is for investors. So when that's up, Bitcoin goes down. When the rates go down and you can earn less in interest, people flock into Bitcoin. So that's kind of the correlation there between the interest rates and Bitcoin. Uh, for my for my interpretation of it anyways okay let's let's catch up on some chat here that's enough news so big shout out to bitcoin news once again for sponsoring the show and for supporting the little guy essentially the little channels and for doing just great work over there <clears throat> james bond says there's no normies coming into bitcoin around me I think about i think a lot of us can relate to that and it's something that it's something that gives me a lot of hope for one is that there's so few people in bitcoin right now but it also i think for a lot of people makes them feel a little bit lonely and that's i've lived through that for sure there was times in my life where i had absolutely nobody to talk to about bitcoin in real life or online thankfully nostra came about and i've been on nostra for about a year now and it was the greatest decision of my life to join that in terms of my virtual anyways. Uh, but also something kind of cool over in the living in the future. Too. So it's a good time maybe to talk. About that. We set up a group chat full of Bitcoiners. It's growing by the day. There's new members joining every day. New members coming into the group chat every day. So if you are somebody who's just wanting to talk to people about Bitcoin, wanting to share information, get information, ask questions, it's kind of cool. And we're going to be it's going to evolve kind of the idea there is we're going to have different specialists within the group give presentations we can we can send them back for doing it uh, we're going to have everybody's lightning addresses in there so if you have a question you can actually send them bitcoin instantly for that. so it's going to be a really good community i think for bitcoin to just hang out talk about different things and learn a lot so if you're interested in that the description it has a little said living in the future check that out you can join for seven days for free and if you don't like it then you can just cancel but i have a pretty strong feeling that it's pretty good it's a pretty good time uh what else we got here randall 
Is it true that like the last 30 years of halvings combined will only issue one Bitcoin? That is true. And we tried this on the show the other day and we failed, but we'll maybe give it another quick try here for Randall. I messed this one up last time, but that's what happens on live shows. So this is the having, this is my having graph that I, my having chart that I use. And so you can see here, I'm sure everybody's seen the different graphics around the having and what kind of impact it's going to have. But I broke it down into per year and per day. So if we look at this, maybe it'll work for me today. Yep, it will. So this, this shows here per year, and this is in four year cycles. So every one of these is four years. So from, let's look at 20, 2100 to 2136. That equals, I don't know if you can see it at the bottom right corner there, but that equals 1.25 Bitcoin. So from 20, the year 2100, I'm sure most of us will be around by then still. <laughs> 2100 to 2136 when the last Bitcoin is mined. There will only be one Bitcoin, 1.25 Bitcoin during those 36 years. Pretty incredible. And I understand that most people might not be around. I have a feeling we might based on if you listen to guys like Ray Kurzweil talk about longevity and health and technology and what kind of impact that's going to have. I, I believe that we're going to live a lot longer than we have before. So we might be around 2100. Let's hope we're going to have a lot of Bitcoin to spend anyways at that time. If we do it properly. Uh, so that is Randall's question. That's a good question. Sorry, I'm a little bit behind in the chat here. Having a hard time keeping up. Randall says, I was going over the numbers. It was staggering. It is. Yep. Sorry, I'm a little bit behind here. But that's Okay. Tommy says, joined, haven't seen the chat. Okay, Tommy, I'll send you a, I'll put a note in here to send you an email right after this with the link. You have to love live shows. You never really know what's going to happen and what kind of shit we're going to get into here. <laughs> yeah. Bob was in the chat last time when we tried doing this and I messed it up. So this time it was a success. Last time it wouldn't register for me there, but this time it was a success. One Bitcoin for the world, and it'll take 36 years to mine it. Think about that. That's a perfect way to segment into what we're talking about today. One Bitcoin for the world, and it'll take 36 years to mine. Insane. Technically speaking, we could run the entire world economy on one sat. That is, I would say that's a bit of a stretch, <laughs> just based on where we are today. But at the same time, I really believe that the entire world, including Bitcoiners, are underestimating what kind of impact on the world this is going to have and how scarce Bitcoin is going to be as time moves on. So this was a question from yesterday, and this was actually from Nostra. So the beauty of these shows, every Thursday we do a live show on YouTube, on Zap.stream, and we do live, or we answer the questions live from the chat, but we can also have questions come in through email, 88sats at proton.me. I want you to send me an email with anything. If you have a question for the show, if you're looking for information on how to progress as a Bitcoiner, you need some help, or anything, any comments on the show, 88 that's at proton.me. So this one actually came from Noster. So I take from the chat, email, Noster, and YouTube comments. So this one is from, oh, I can see the whole name. I just took a screenshot of it. But it says, your show has become part of my morning routine. Thank you. With Sailor and the ETF seemingly buying up all the Bitcoin, it's becoming more rare to own one Bitcoin. I saw a stat yesterday that as of today, there will only ever be 200,000 whole coins on earth. 
would you be able to talk about the importance of being a whole coiner? So that's the question for today. That's where we're going to start the show with. Would you be able to talk about the importance of becoming a whole coiner? Well, we just kind of talked about the importance of it. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Hello, Cosjello said, that is my question, Jor. Thanks for the Nostra follow. The key to Nostra is taking advantage of the community there. Not taking advantage of, but like asking questions and following people. If you sign up for Nostra, make sure the first thing you do is follow as many accounts as you possibly can. Because that's the idea of it. You want to be interacting on there. It's not like our traditional social media platforms where you just kind of show up and make a few good posts and maybe the algorithm will help you out. With this, you have to be interacting. So that is a good question. And we're going to kind of talk through it here. So becoming a whole coiner. I do think that, as mentioned in the, in the comment, as of today, there will only ever be 200,000 whole coiners on Earth. And I'm sure if you're watching this stream, you probably get to interact with some of those whole coiners right now. Whether that's somebody on Noster, whether that's somebody with a YouTube show, but I do think that as we move along here, it's going to get worse. And I wouldn't focus so much on trying to get a whole coin. That's, that's not the thing here, I don't think. I think what you can do is just focus on converting it, providing as much value to the world as you possibly can. Start with that. Because whether you're in the fiat world or you're in the Bitcoin world, the more value that you can add to the world, the more value is going to flow. So that's kind of the starting point that I, would, that I would go with. Make that your priority. Don't focus on the numbers. Don't focus on trying to get to one whole coin. It is very hard. I'll tell you that because I've been in Bitcoin for four years now. And I do not have a whole coin yet. So it's something that I'm working actively on, but I do not have a whole coin myself. And it is tough. Unless you're somebody who had a ton of wealth in the old system, whether you had real estate or you've been retired for a while, it's 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 much easier for people to get a whole coin if they had capital in the old system. It's kind of, I wouldn't say it pisses me off, but it because they've earned it. You have to think about that. The people who have capital in the old system, whether that's in their pension, their retirement fund, real estate, they provided enough value that they were able to earn that in the old system. So although it kind of pisses me off how easy it is for them to, to get one whole Bitcoin, they've earned it. They put in the work, they've gone through the years, they've added enough value that they were able to get the equivalent of one whole Bitcoin. And so it is very possible for people to get one Bitcoin right now, but I think we pretty much price the entire middle class. And so if you think about, think about where the price is today of one Bitcoin, it's about 60,000 bucks. The, the percentage of people who could actually convert their fiat, their pension, whatever that is, into Bitcoin is very small right now. I'd say the top 1% of people in Canada and the US can do that. And as the price goes up, let's say it goes to 200,000, that shortens and that shrinks that percentage even further. So as we go along, it's pretty much impossible, I think, for a lot of people to convert their life energy into Bitcoin right now, which is kind of sad. But at the same time, the two things I would say there is that you should be working as hard as you possibly can today. Today. Every single sat that you can accrue. And, you know, my grandma actually used to say, she's a Ukrainian, an, old, an older Ukrainian. <laughs> she she's uh no filter one of those ladies uh no filter on her but very good advice and she's lived through different cycles within the world she's seen the the currency move from backed by gold to backed by nothing and so kind of one of the things that i learned from her aside from her very good cooking that she does but she said that look after the nickels and dimes and the dollars will look after themselves and if you keep that in mind with everything, that's something that I've always lived by. And so that that in kind of includes 
you know, never taking your money for granted, never wasting it on stupid shit. I mean, there's times to have fun, to take trips, but never just throw away money. Because if you look after the small amounts, the nickels and dimes, then over time that will accrue and it'll turn into a dollar. And it's the exact same thing with Bitcoin. So look after your sats and the Bitcoin will, will look after itself. So do everything that you possibly can today to start getting Bitcoin, earning Bitcoin, and saving in Bitcoin. Because if you think about it, one, one whole Bitcoin is very daunting. But if you break it down into millions, mil a million sats. So every time you get to one million, you, you only need a hundred of those. I think that's very doable for, for a lot of people over time. But you're not, I will tell you that you're not going to be able to work hard enough to convert fiat into Bitcoin. You have to set up your life in a way that you're focused on growing uh, businesses within Bitcoin, earning Bitcoin, and providing value to Bitcoiners so you can you can get sats in return for that. That's what I would focus on. And in the zap.stream chat. Noah says, one good way to get one whole Bitcoin is convert your IRA or even your 401k to Bitcoin. That is, that's that's the perfect way to start. So if you kind of think of that, think of it that you're trying to accrue as many $1 million wallets or $1 million sat wallets as you can. So if you can get a big head start there, if you can convert some of your retirement fund into Bitcoin, today instead of waiting until it's 200,000 and then you panic cash it out pay taxes pay fees and then you end up with about a fraction of what you would have got today today time to be doing that and if you have an IRA or you have a retirement fund that isn't easily accessible to just cash out and buy bitcoin with the one thing that I would recommend is converting that whatever you have shares bonds whatever it is convert that into the bitcoin ETF and if you have a way in Canada here, we have something called the TFSA. So you can move that into there. You can ride the wave of Bitcoin. You can get the exposure to the Bitcoin price. Unfortunately, you don't hold the keys to that Bitcoin, but that's part of the risk you have to deal with. So you ride the Bitcoin wave up, you cash that out. You don't pay any tax on it. You don't pay any fees to move it over. You cash that out and then you buy Bitcoin. Because you're gonna you're gonna ride the whole wave of Bitcoin through that vehicle, through that pension, IRA, whatever it is in the U.S., and you're gonna be able to cash that out, and you can buy Bitcoin. And the beauty of that is it's gonna be tax free. You can take that cash, you can go buy non KYC sats with that, and you'll get much much closer to having one whole Bitcoin. So that's what I would say on that: is get as much as you can. Find ways to earn Bitcoin. That's one of our main focuses on the Living in the Future private membership that we have. We talk about becoming better Bitcoiners, learning how to store our Bitcoin better, building businesses within uh, within Bitcoin, figuring out how to earn Sats. Because it, think about this. This is a perfect example. So if you are somebody who believes that Bitcoin is going to get eventually to be one to one with the dollar, one Sat equals one dollar. Think about that. If you can find a way to say earn 100,000 sats per month, whatever you're doing, instead of waiting to buy that with fiat, you're going to have to pay $100,000 worth of fiat for that. Or you can start building that today and you can get that recurring 100,000 sats every month. That stacks up, that adds up over time. That makes your journey much more uh, less difficult. And that's how you should start thinking about things. Don't look at it as like one sat being a fraction of a penny. Think about one sat being one dollar. Live in that mentality. Have that mindset. And then what, what you're going to do with that is you're going to put much more of your time, much more of your energy into building things, giving value that's going to bring Bitcoin back instead of fiat. And so whatever that is, I understand that a lot of people have a job. They have to earn dollars to keep food on the table. I get that. But you could wake up at 5 in the morning instead of 7.30. Wake up at 5 a.m., work on Bitcoin, work on your business, work on earning sats. Or after work, instead of turning on Netflix and turning your mind off for the night, 
get on Tenoster, start making connections on there, add value, earn Bitcoin. And over time, it will happen. I have no doubt in my mind that I'm going to get to one Bitcoin one day. Zero doubt. And it's not going to be because I, I buy enough Bitcoin to get there. I'm going to set up different ways, different avenues where I can earn Bitcoin. And over time, it will get there. Without I'll, It'll happen one day and I won't even know that it happened. So that's kind of the mindset that I want you to have here with getting to a whole coin. And it's the exact same with, with losing weight or hitting a fitness. The last thing you want to be doing is focusing on the thing. You want to put in the work, go through the process, do everything that you know that you need to do to get there without looking at the scale every morning. Look at the scale every month, every two months. And over time, you're just going to be more focused on the actual process, on the actual work that goes into that instead of the results. So it's the exact same with Bitcoin. Don't be looking at your Bitcoin wallet every day and wishing that you had one Bitcoin. Focus your time and energy on earning Bitcoin, adding value, and over time, it will add up to one Bitcoin. That's what I would say about that. And Letha in the chat says, Perpetual Assets is a great company for converting your IRA or your 401k into Bitcoin. So there you go. Great question, great thought experiment, and it is important. It's something that we need to be really focused on going forward. I'm too old to agree with you. Boomers did get it easy. Well, I don't know. I mean, my dad went to work every day. He made time for us, more than enough time. But he went to work every day. I think he took like three sick days over the course of his 40-year career. He dealt with a lot of shit. And so I do think that boomers had it easier in terms of being able to afford more, but they also put in the work. They put in the work. I have no doubt about that. And I, I really hope that we can get back to uh, a life, a society where mom and dad don't have to go to work because what, the, what that's created is that when mom and dad both have to go to work, that leaves the kids on their own. Right. Not on their own, but they, they're forced to send them to the public schools. And in those public schools, that's how we became brainwashed into everything that we know right now. And that's why it's so hard for people to actually comprehend Bitcoin and how our monetary system works is because of the public schooling system. You, you grow up, that's your whole life. You go there every day, you get trained how to be a good employee, how to be a good citizen, how to be a good uh, I won't say slave, but slave essentially, because that's what it is. But the good news is we have Bitcoin. The world is changing. People are going to not even know what Bitcoin is or understand it, but we're going to, they're just going to slowly notice that their lives get better and better. And there's going to be businesses like homeschools that pop up. And I think that's going to be, if we do have a Bitcoin standard, the one thing I think that's going to really change for the better is that mom and dad don't have to go to work. They can if they want to, but they're going to have the flexibility to do it. And if they want to raise their kids themselves instead of the public schooling system doing it, they're going to have that. So uh, in the zapped off stream chat, Noah says, thanks, Letha. I'm not familiar with Perpetual. In the US, Bitcoin, RA, Bitcoin IRA makes it easy, but it's custodial. To hold your own keys used unchained or swan but let's go with unchained i'm actually talking to a guy from unchained right now we're on signal together chatting back and forth and so i might be doing a little bit of work with unchained here so if you are somebody in the us who wants to convert your retirement fund into your into bitcoin uh, send me an email or a message on Noster. just find a way to get a hold of me there and if you're in canada and you want to convert your pension into a TFSA and buy some Bitcoin ETFs, again, send me a message. I work pretty closely with a couple of financial advisors here who are Bitcoin friendly. And we've helped a couple of people from the chat, from the community already, convert their pension into Bitcoin savings. So pretty cool. It's nice that there are financial advisors who are embracing Bitcoin instead of just hoping that it goes away. 
I think they've learned that it's not going to go away. The smart ones anyways. So not only are they embracing it, but they're actually helping people buy Bitcoin and talking to their clients about Bitcoin. So rock and roll says, if you're caught up on the fiat price, remind yourself that you need to continue providing values to value to others. Bingo. Steven is in the chat. Our friend from Ireland. Good morning, my friend, or good evening to you. I'm sure it is there. Glad to see you in here. So if there's no more questions, we'll wrap up the show for today. If there are any more questions, toss them in the chat. And I, I would highly encourage, I know that there's quite a few people watching in on the YouTube right now, but I would highly con, uh, encourage you to check out Zap.Stream. Stream. It's awesome over there. I'm going to send a couple zaps here to people who are in the Zap.Stream. Stream because mostly because it's so cool. It's connected to the LB. You can just send over lightning. So there's some for Phil, uh, Letha, sorry, I'll, I'll probably get to these, but I don't really need to do it live, but I would encourage people. So you can find that by going to bitcoinjourney.ca forward slash stream. So it won't, actually won't even take you to my website at all. It'll take you directly to the live stream on Zap.com. Uh, is that it? Actually, no, I did have one more thing to talk about. So we'll set this up. If there are any more questions, any more discussions that you guys want to have this morning, throw it in the chat. And if not, uh, we'll end with this. <clears throat> Make sure I'm not sharing this. Just a sec. Just one second here. Okay, so this is what I received yesterday from my pal, who is a financial advisor here in the prairies. Him and I work fairly closely together. We've helped a couple, like I said, a couple people within the community here uh, convert their move from their old advisor and into Bitcoin or into uh, to him and helping them get Bitcoin. Fuck, I can't get rid of this here. Okay, how are we going to do this without showing my email? Hmm. Maybe I'll just forward this to Gmail. Unfortunately, ProtonMail isn't very friendly in terms of being able to share links without showing all of my email address here or all my email account. So sorry to everybody who doesn't like Gmail, but this is uh, necessary. Okay, here we go. Sorry for the little bit of downtime here. I should have had this prepared, but shit happens literally on the floor. Okay, come on, Proton Mail. So slow. There we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So look at this. Per, look at this Bitcoin performance compared to major other major asset classes. So you can see here at the top, it kind of shows. It starts at the top with the best performing assets, I think. But look at this graph and tell me how every financial planet is not setting up a meeting with their clients this morning to buy Bitcoin. Explain to me. So we got 2013, Bitcoin was up 5,000%. The next year, 2014, <laughs> Bitcoin minus 58% with the SPX being the top one there at 12%. 2015, Bitcoin is 37% up, the highest, best performing asset. 2016, 118%, again, the best performing asset. 2017, 13,000 or 1300%, the best performing asset. 2018, Bitcoin is down 73%, 
with the best performing asset being AGG at 0%. So you broke even. That was the best performing asset. 2019, Bitcoin was up 92%, making it the best performing asset again. 20, 2020, Bitcoin was up 302%, making it the best performing asset once again. And 2021, 58% up. You can see the trend here. That's kind of the one of the memes within Bitcoin right now is green, 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 red. And so that means that Bitcoin up, 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 down. 2023, 156%, the latest year that we've had. And it was the best performing asset again. Cumulative. Look at this. Cumulative. 315,000% up. Bitcoin. Best performing asset. The second closest was the SPX at 226%. Bitcoin, 315,000%, SPX, 226%, second best. So when Michael Saylor says there is no second best, he's not fucking around. That is legitimate. There, there is no second best to what Bitcoin has been doing. And annualized, that is 124% return every single year. That is honestly crazy. And I can't really understate how crazy that is. So a couple things there. That was from my friend who's a financial advisor. He spent his whole career working in the traditional finance, traditional investments. And so he's noticing what's happening here within Bitcoin. So first of all there, if you are somebody who's looking for a financial advisor who is Bitcoin friendly, reach out to me. I'll put you in touch with him. He's a great guy. And as you can see, very Bitcoin friendly. But the second point there that I wanted to mention is that <laughs> it's it's insane that that that's the case where at one percent of people the ETFs have just entered this year. The ETFs are not even on this graph yet, and the ETFs have been buying thirty thousand Bitcoin a week. I think it is for the last month, two months. So 2024, I'd imagine what that's going to be on there. But there really is no second best in terms of investing in Bitcoin. So going to check in on Zapdos stream. I saw a couple in there. Great to be. Oh, a couple people in there. We got, uh, I can't even see them anymore. I don't know what happened here. But anyways, Zapdos stream is buzzing. So we're going to leave it there, I think, for today. <clears throat> what can we end with? I mean, 350,000% in the last 11 years. If you do have anything, if you have anything in your life, any sort of assets, retirement funds, old hockey cards, some silver, some gold, I think that you are insane that if you're not putting that into Bitcoin, whatever you can. And we talked about taking it 1 million sats at a time. If you can find a couple of different things around your house to sell on the internet, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. I've sold some things on Noster in the last couple of weeks. I sold a security system that I had for, I think it was 700,000 sats. I've sold some dress shirts and polos that I had kicking around the house on Noster for sats. And you can use different websites. I think one of them is called satscrap.com, where you can, it's just it's just like eBay, except you list your items for sats instead of dollars. People can pay in dollars, but I think it converts into sats. Uh, so we got Hello Costello. I see him in the Zap.stream, stream, and I see him in the YouTube. Look at that. He's double dipping today. He said, how do you sell stuff on Noster? That's a great question. Let's talk about this. This is my favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> so first thing I would do, we'll go through a couple of steps here. First thing I would do, get onto Noster. Find a way, whatever you can do, download Domus, download Primal, get yourself set up on Noster and start building a network on there. Start interacting with people. 
because the the key there is that you're going to have to have some patience. This isn't something that you're going to download an Oster, you're going to set up an account and you're going to start listing things on there for SaaS. Nobody's going to buy it. Because and the reason for that is nobody's going to trust you. So number one, get on to Noster, get yourself set up, start interacting on there and put a lot of your energy and your focus into growing your network on Noster. Number two, find whatever it is around your house that you want to sell. Gather them up, put them in a box, make a list, put a price beside it in terms of how many sats you want to get for it and start there. So you're already kind of set up, but then you're going to have to wait a little while. So the key here is that you're going to have to develop relationships. You're going to have to develop a reputation on Noster because that's the only way that this works right now in terms of the only reason why somebody would send me 700,000 sats with nothing in return. I still had to ship the item to them, but they sent the Bitcoin on chain. I received it and they sent that just simply because they trust me. I built up a reputation on Noster as, you know, you have some followers on there, you have a lot of interactions, your history. And I cannot understate the importance of that as we move into this Bitcoin world. Not only for finding and selling things on a marketplace, that's kind of like the, the low hanging fruit here. But I, I really believe that as the internet changes from our current internet into Noster and what that's going to look like, your reputation, your community, your network within Noster is going to be your greatest asset. So do everything that you can to start building that now, because the, the one thing that it takes is time. So the, the best time to start is today. And so I say that because it's going to have an impact on marketplace. It's going to have an impact on finding a job, maybe in the future, finding people to meet up with in your area. Everything is going to be based on your reputation. It, it kind of already is online. If you look at your LinkedIn, uh, people have a YouTube channel now, but put a real focus on that. In the past, it was you're trying to beef up your resume, make your resume as most attractive as possible. But now you really need to focus on building your online reputation, your online resume. And the best thing that you can be doing right now is get getting onto Noster because that's where the Bitcoiners are. So with that, I very much appreciate everybody being here as always, especially for the live shows. We had some good conversation today and I hope you take something away from this. The one thing to take away from today's show is figuring out what kind of value you can add to the world start building systems, building networks on how you can earn Bitcoin by providing that value to people. And over time, focus on the, the long term. Don't be looking at it every single day. Focus on the long term. The key with Bitcoin is having a very long time preference, very low time preference. And so that is the key for today. Oh, good morning, my friend. He said, I accumulated more than one Bitcoin just by DCAing in 2002 to in today's Bitcoin prices, I don't see myself accumulating one. I agree. There's, there's absolutely no way that I could get to one Bitcoin today by working a job. Because you think about the average salary here in Canada and the US is probably what, 60, 70,000 bucks. You take out all your expenses. Actually, I did a little. We're an hour into it, but that's okay. We have no time on it. He's being good. I got nothing immediately after the show. So let, let's look at this. The people are who are still. This is what I came up with the other day. And this is what kind of uh, much of a nerd I am. But I just kind of like doing different things on the spreadsheet just because it, it seems more real instead of just thinking through things in your head. If you can put it on paper and actually look at it. So look at this. This is what I came up with. <clears throat> Let's share this. So this is this is actually based on an average salary of eighty thousand dollars, which I think is significantly higher than the average here in Canada. But you got an average salary of eighty thousand. You take out your taxes, taxes, CPP, EI, all the bullshit that they take off every single paycheck years. I said about thirty thousand bucks. It's probably higher than that. You got your house, 
This was $2,000 per month, which I think is also on the low end for a lot of people. You got your car, your fuel, your insurance. That's about $9,600 a month. Your food. Or sorry, this is pretty. That's about $400 per month for a total of $4,800. And property taxes, $4,000. Utility, $2,400 for the year. This is kind of my best guess in terms of prices. I think that it's actually on the low end for the costs and the high end for the salary. So that leaves you with about 200 after just like the bare necessities of the work. One year you work, that's what you get to take home, about 5,200 bucks. And for a lot of people, if you go on a trip, one holiday, that eats up that entire 5,200 bucks. So that doesn't include your Netflix membership. It doesn't include your couple extra bags of chips every time you go to the grocery store. <laughs> Whatever it is, or your ticket to the movie theater. I don't know if people still go to the theater or not. This is just your bare necessities of your life. And Bitcoin here in Canada is 90000 So that would take you 17 years if you didn't buy yourself anything at all. You just lived on what you needed to. It would take you 17 years right now to buy one Bitcoin. Pretty crazy. And so when you think about that, how demotivating is that for people? That's the fiat world. And if you, <laughs> and if you converted that into Bitcoin and you started fo really focusing on earning SaaS instead of dollars, all of that, instead of getting more expensive through the years, everything will get cheaper. So two things there. Start buying Bitcoin today, whatever you can into Bitcoin today, and start focusing on how to earn Bitcoin. So Letha says, I'm in the US and I felt like Primal was the easiest way to get onto Nostril. Primal is pretty good. I don't use it on my phone because my phone's too old. But from what I hear, Primal is the best one. Okay. Let's uh, just check in quickly on the zap.stream here. Reckon Graves says, can you make an example use case of being able to stream online as well as sewing things and as well as group chat meetings in order to have the old ecosphere of what it means to be self-sufficient online? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Can you make an example in case of being able to stream online as well as sewing things and as well as group chat meetings in order to deal with the sphere of what it means to be self-sufficient online. I don't really understand the question. I'm sorry. Maybe try to reword that if you're still in the chat over there. And I'll maybe try to answer it. Uh, a great tip here says, Nostra tip, make sure to add relays. At least 10 to, 5, 10 to 50, not just 4 or 5. Feel free to scrape from my profile. And who is it? They stopped. They took away my, my names on here for some reason. I think that's Noah. So anyways, I apologize for being a little bit scrambly today, but I'm jumping between chats. I'm trying to take questions and I'm trying to understand the questions. There's a new face in the chat. Sion Yasai. Yashai. Welcome, my friend. Currency of freedom and rights. It is. Absolutely is. Okay, so we'll give Recon a couple minutes here, or a couple seconds to try to reword that. Oh, I think he means selling, not sewing. <laughs> uh, living for sale. Okay, so I will touch on that quickly. I think that is important. So... My, my theory on this, and this is the last, this is going to be the last thing I talk about, I promise. But for everybody who's still here, I appreciate you. Uh, so what I would say is that whatever you do in life, I, I would highly encourage you to not only get on Nostra, but start thinking about different ways where you can talk about whatever it is that you love to do. So for me, that's golf and Bitcoin. And I've kind of set up my life in a way where we have a golf course where we sell products 
in the real world. We also have a podcast and we do a bunch of different things online. And so I'm going to slowly, we, we are accepting Bitcoin already. I'm going to get it much more efficient for people to pay in Bitcoin as more and more people are using it. But really focus on what you love to do. What would get you excited to get up at five in the morning or to do it after work at night? Whatever that thing is, everybody's going to be different. For me, it's golf and Bitcoin. That's why I have the show. And that's why we have our golf company. And it is going to be, it takes a very long time. You have to have a very low time preference in Bitcoin. But you don't have to quit your job today. Do not quit your job today. You still have your expenses to pay for. According to that graph, it's about $70,000 worth every year. So do not quit your job and start doing this. But in the morning before work, at night after work, start building a community, start building a network around whatever it is that you love to do. Because even though you're probably not going to get a, a big sponsorship right away from a company within your interest group, you still can set up on Noster.stream and just do a stream every day for half an hour or an hour. Talk about whatever it is you love doing, love talking about. And there will be people that show up. It could be Pokemon cards. It could be cooking. It could be gardening. But whatever that is, you just have to make yourself a little bit uncomfortable. It is, you know, I've been doing this for three or four months now every morning, and it's still uncomfortable for me to do it. This never, it never gets easy. But you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations and uncomfortable feelings if you really want to take advantage of this time because we do have a very small window here it's not going to be like this forever so get yourself up on noster get yourself up on zap stream and just start talking about it, whatever it is that you love and slowly over time that's the best way to start earning sats even if it's a thousand sats every week on zap.stream if you convert that into one dollar equals one sat and you're actually living in the future already, that's worth it to do. And on Noster, you can get on there, you make a post every single day or a couple times a day talking about what it is you love. And if you get a thousand sats per week on there, that's a thousand dollars per year or per week in the in the future. So forget about the price, forget about the fiat price of Bitcoin. Focus on the sats, the amount of sats that you're earning. And that's what I will say. Everybody should be doing that. Everybody who watches the show, this isn't, this show isn't focused on fucking graphs and the charts and trying to sell people on buying Bitcoin. It's focused on how we can work through this, how we can take advantage of this very small window in time that we have to really change our whole trajectory and our family's trajectory in life. Something we can be doing today. So with that, I appreciate everybody on Zap stream. YouTube, you guys and girls are awesome and you make it much easier for me and much more exciting to wake up every day and do this, even on the floor. So with that, I hope you have a deep day of your life today. Happy Thursday. And we'll be right back here first thing for Friday with some Baileys in the coffee. So we'll talk to you then. Get set up on the officer and start thinking about how you can earn stats.